We have Adrian Broner, who is undefeated, 24-0, against Antonio DeMarco, who's 22-2-1. Not a bad fight. You know, we talked about it off the air. He's finally stepping it up a little bit, Broner is, little by little. The fight takes place in Atlantic City, New Jersey. We look at the tail of the tape really quickly. Broner, 23 years old, three years younger than DeMarco. You know, he's shorter, 5'7", to DeMarco's 5'10". Uh, however, there is no reach advantage, but DeMarco is the southpaw. So let me ask you this, you know, with DeMarco being the taller fighter, don't you think that Broner will just kind of get in, get out? He will display his hand speed as he always does in every single fight. He'll get in, he'll get out. He will better DeMarco for many rounds. I would say about six or seven, and then maybe finish him off in the later rounds. I think that's an accurate, uh, an accurate estimation as to what is going to happen. We know how Broner fights. Uh, we've seen Broner fight. He is a, he's an exemplary boxer. He's fast. He hits hard. But he's in with a, certainly the toughest opponent of his career so far. Uh, I don't think that DeMarco, or excuse me, uh, yes, DeMarco is a world beater, but he's a hell of a good fighter. As anybody who saw his fight with Jorge Linares knows, he's a really a tough guy. Hits hard, but he's slow. And again, somebody who's slow against somebody who's fast, we know what's going to happen. So if there is a blueprint for DeMarco to follow, what exactly would it be against a quicker opponent? He just has to jab. He has to march him down. He just has to jab, jab, march him down, follow up with the right, jab, jab. I mean, he basically, or follow up with the left, excuse me, because he's a southpaw. Uh, so he just basically, um, he has to make Broner fight his fight, if that's possible. I mean, Broner is going to try to do exactly the opposite, but nobody fights Broner's fight, because Broner is one of those fighters like, I, dare I say it, Floyd Mayweather. I mean, one of those, you know, who fights his own fight all the time, and, and everybody ends up fighting his fight. Um, and Broner's that kind of fighter, so DeMarco's going to have his hands full, but again, DeMarco um, has a lot to gain in this fight. Uh, it's a big showcase for him. And uh, it's a big showcase for Broner as well. But uh, yeah, I think DeMarco's going to come to fight, and he's going to come to win. There's a lot of questions by fans and the media on Adrian Broner's mentality towards the sport and how he sort of lacks this sort of respect. Now, when we look at it, he won, I believe, yes, he was the youngest American to win the super featherweight title. And then he lost it against Escobedo because he simply didn't care to make weight. He was overweight by three and a half pounds. There's this controversy on whether they should fight. They did. He crushed Escobedo round by round, beat him up round by round. This is his seventh fight, however, on HBO. So they clearly see something in him. One out of his last three fights have gone the distance. But what do you make about this sort of mentality that he has, or at least is displaying for us to analyze? It may not actually be his mentality. I think that a lot of it has to do with the culture uh, from which he has emerged. Uh, he comes from a world that is not your world. It's not my world. It's his world. Uh, it's inner city Cincinnati. Um, and there is a certain kind of, I wouldn't call it gracelessness, because he's in fact very graceful in the ring, but a certain sort of, w w what do I care? Um, as though the good times, however good they may be, are not going to last forever, and that he might as well enjoy himself while he can. I think of perhaps more interest is why HBO has so sort of banked on Broner as being the star of the future. Uh, is it because of how he fights? Is it because of his gimmick with the hair combing and his sort of bubbly personality? Is it because he's got a shoulder roll like Floyd Mayweather? I mean, it's sort of... One has to wonder sometimes why HBO banks on the fighters that they bank on. And I, I think about that, and I don't really have the exact answer. Well, maybe I can provide you with the answer. What I see in Adrian Broner is a young, hungry fighter, albeit he does these sort of antics that, yes, they're sort of Floyd, Floyd Mayweather-esque. They're cocky. It makes him look like an asshole. I mean, I'll be honest about it. But the fact is... it. Uh, it only matters what you display in the ring. And from what I see from him, he has the Philly shell defense like Mayweather. He has the shoulder roll, like you said, adding to his defense. But he has the hand speed. He has the boxing IQ. He has the ring generalship. I mean, I think those are solid reasons why HBO would bank on him. 
Well, I agree, but a lot of people have those qualities, and, and HBO doesn't throw, 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 throw their weight behind him. I think uh, part of it may have to, have to do with his management, uh, and I think part of it has to do with really his saleability, because as you know, um, HBO, even though they're in the boxing business, I mean, first and foremost, they're in the entertainment business, and Broner is entertaining. He's entertaining in the ring, he's entertaining after the fights. He's entertaining out of the ring. I mean, he's a real character, and he's a, like a lovable character. Um, not everybody agrees with me, <laughs> but at least that's my impression. Who else do you think is comparable to Adrian Broner or is possibly better than Adrian Broner? When, when you said that a lot of people have those qualities, a lot of fighters do, but then you also said that some other people do. Who else do you think should be on those HBO cards? Well, I think very few fighters. I can't think of any fighters that have that kind of personality. They're so sort of saleable and such sort of, you know, cards and so sort of, you know, humorous and sort of, you know, bending down after fights and sort of proposing, fake proposing to his, his fiance. And I mean, I mean, uh, I mean, some people think that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's really funny, but a lot of other people think that's like in really bad taste, you know, and mm. that uh, she certainly deserves better and perhaps the fight fans deserve better. But, uh, there's a sucker born every minute, and people are going to buy whatever is their sold. I mean, that's just how it is. Uh, Broner, as you pointed out, can fight, and he fights really well. Uh, whether he's going to be the next, uh, you know, the next uh, superstar in a galaxy of boxing supernovas remains to be seen, but, I mean, at least he's being given a chance, and he's being given a big platform on which to perform. I kid you not, after that fight ended, and he got down on one knee and asked his girlfriend if she could brush his hair, I kid you not, I was watching with a few of my friends, and they said that their par her parents were going to ream her out and literally say, I told you not to be with him. I told you he was no good for you. I told you. I knew it. So, yeah, a lot of people are turned off by his shtick, but I guess, you know what? It is what it is. So let me ask you this, Robert. 10 p.m. Eastern time on HBO, Saturday night, Adrian Broner and DeMarco. I personally have Broner winning by either eighth or ninth round knockout. What do you think? I think that's about right. I think he's going to break him down after after like uh, maybe the fifth or sixth round. Broner figures out DeMarco, starts to bust him up, starts to break him down, and eventually drops him. I think eighth or ninth round will be about right. All right, you heard it there. Robert Axel, the editor in chief of boxing.com. You could also follow him on Twitter at boxing underscore com and follow his fantastic writing at www.boxing.com. Thank you, Robert. You're welcome, Rick.